Okay, uh, we've covered the business of quill pen um, and bamboo pen drawing. I've now decided to work on a different type of pen work, which involves the use of a fountain pen. And we're going to be doing a, like a cityscape. This is in Prague, in the snow. And the beauty of it is, is that, for example, if you're out uh, wishing to be sketching, a fountain pen is ideal for that job. Now, fountain pens come in all shapes and sizes. For example, we have a what we call an art pen by Rotring, which has a nib producing italic lines. Then we have a, a lame, for example, which has a pointed nib, ideal for doing um, vine lines. It's a broader chafer, wider italic nib, and so on. They come in different shapes and sizes, even, for example, this one, which is, a, again, another rotring, it's a drafting pen, and is ideal for doing things like circles and ellipses, etc., using templates. Templates come in different types. For example, we've got a, a circle template, ideal for circles of different diameters. Ellipses, perfect for doing ovals for arches, etc., in architectural work and a very useful device for those of us that can't draw a straight line, uh, a straight edge as it's often referred to as, or a ruler. Now, I find that with fine architectural work, the tendency is to want to use a ruler for every single straight line. You can do that, but thereby lies madness. By far better to do a general, fairly loose drawing just the sheer complexity will make for quite an architectural effect. Now, all these little window bars, etc., are in actual fact white in reality, so I need to only lightly indicate them uh, because when it comes to inking in, I'm going to use an opaque ink which will create the effect of the light. For example, here, this arch here is actually quite dark, so I'm just going to lightly indicate what happens there so that when I use the light pen, then I can do it. Now, a little colonnade like this is always tricky. So I just do a little vertical squiggle. It's amazing what you can do just by squiggling away without recourse to making it look too, too accurate. It's an impression we're after more than anything. Okay, so we've done the basic drawing. We're ready to go. I've plotted a a broad shadow line to creep across the base here to stop the picture from pouring off the bottom and then zigzagged up here for to imply a building in the background but I think this is, looks a bit awkward this squiggle so I'm going to erase that and what's useful is to use like an erasing shield so that you can erase quite tight up to lines like so. Very useful little device one I picked up when I was an architectural draftsman and still use the same basic techniques to this day. Okay, so now what we need to do is to prepare for giving the whole image a wash. Okay, so I finished the drawing work basically. Um, if I think I need more, I can always add. But I've prepared all my colours. I've got some raw sienna, burnt umber, um, burnt sienna, some green for the copper roofs, etc. And I've got this beautiful Naples yellow, which is the colour of the buildings generally. So using a broad brush, in this instance a hake, I broadly put the washes in. I don't want them fiddly, I'm not going hard to the edges, etc. I let the pen work do that. And so here we go. Two coats of sunshine style Dulux. You want it pale to start with until you're more confident that you've got it right and then we can down the buildings here. The groundwork's going to be greyer. I'm putting a little bit of raw umber into the sienna colour of the buildings to make them a little darker in parts. The sculpture, the column etc I'll do with a more detailed brush. In the background it's paler, here it's darker and here too, very pale on the building in front. And this having the kind of, you've got the buildings horizontal in field, but I like to put the colour in vertically. That helps to put more tension into the scape. 
landscape standing for landscape. I'll be putting the shadows in later. So just bring it down here. I'm now using a pale indigo colour. Mixed with a brown, we can put in foreground again. Essentially very simple, very broad. I'm putting it whilst the paint's wet. So in other words, you might turn it wet into wet. That way the colours will blend more. We're relying on definition with the use of the pen work. So we don't need to be too defined at this stage. Now using a, a narrow brush, I'm going to put in some darker tone down here for the distance and this little sculpture. This will be the first stage. I'm now going to put in the column, which is going to be a much browner colour. Flat brush is ideal. This is a sable. And again, we're going to be relying on the ink work to do the biz and then this bronze sculpture for which we need a detail brush, small round sable. <coughs> Again, a nice light touch. It's going to be fairly detailed, otherwise you'll lose the precision of the actual sculpture. Now there's some more bronze detailing in and around here, but this paint's still wet, so we'll leave that for a bit. And we need the rest of it to dry before I can put in the sky and the copper roofs, etc. We've got a little bit of detail to put in up here. This will be much darker when I put shadows in. Like so. And so. Again, we're going to rely on the pen work to give us the detail. Notice that windows are, I'm going to blot out here so I can get a feeling of the sunshine uh, rather than the, the light sky colour uh, reflecting off the glass. Here will be actually quite dark, as will be a lot of these arches. But again, for the definition purposes, I've got to let that thoroughly dry. So we'll be patient. Okay, so we've got the first wash on. I should probably be doing about three um, layers of wash so as to get the depth of tone I need. And I've got to make absolutely certain I've got all the colour and wash I need on the image before I do the pen work. Because if I try to add anything subsequent to the fountain pen, it's not waterproof ink and it will bleed like hell and I'll have wasted all my time. So, next thing I'm going to do is some of the detail work, which is initially in and around this roof here. This is all copper verdigris, lovely colour, lovely green colour. Very plain, just cut that. This sort of flat brush is ideal for this. Anything like where it goes a little bit dark in parts is fine. That's okay. Just gives a more actual character to the colour. All right, and now then, we've got some little tiny bits of detail in and around here. Touches where you may get the idea or the effect of the light reflecting against some of the paints. Now this very smooth paper tends to do kind of weird things, so not to worry, just go with it. It's all part and parcel of the character of the image. So we've got some more windows in through here and in behind these chaps here. Okay, so that's that little task done. Now then, down below, it's slightly browner, these arches are very dark. And again, in keeping with the vertical field, put your colour in vertically. Don't just do it scrubbly any old which way, otherwise it looks a bit dull. Now we've got a shadow, I remember me saying, comes across here. A little bit browner, I think. It's a bit too green, that one. That's it. And down there. Across there, really dark in there. Again, it starts to look a little lost, but we'll all come back with the pen work. We've got some little figures in the foreground 
so we'll let those stick out as well. This building here is also much okay. darker. We're now going to do the sky. Now with the sky we need to be very broad. Probably have a couple of goes at it rather than try and get exactly the right tone straight away. Um, but before we do that, just give it a quick dry off. Okay, here we go. Very carefully, just a very simple vertical wash. A shaft of light coming down on the sculpture, maybe why not? Take the wash straight across there just to help push the buildings into the background a little bit. And then carefully dry off the brush and strike off any potential cauliflowers. Okay, so I'm ready to apply the pen work. I'm going to be using my little Lame and Notice I'm not doing a hard straight line, I'm doing a very slightly shaky line. That gives a bit more character to the line. People tend to sort of think they're going to be dead straight because they are, but in fact they would lack character as a result. So do parallel lines, these are actually in perspective, but, and then squiggle over. Notice I'm doing a kind of shaped line. This is a long drawn out process this inking in, but trick is relish it. Enjoy. It's like, it's like people who like knitting, you know? They'll spend hours and hours and hours purling and planing or whatever it is they do. Completely mystifying to me. I have a piece of paper here which just protects my hand from smudging anywhere and it's surprising how much muck you can pick up on your hand. Your drawing, so verticals. Now, the verticals on the left hand side away from the light, so you just give those a little bit more welly, and then the ones that are in the shadow more weight, as we call it in the trade. Okay, so now we can do a series of horizontals. Keep your hand steady. Okay, so now we come into the windows. Now, these window bars are relatively dark, whereas the other ones, if you recall, are white. Now, if, for example, you want to do a vertical line, but it looks as though you might smudge, leave it for later and come back to it. Probably best. Okay, now I seem to have, I think, cracked the bulk of the architectural work. Um, quite pleased with it, actually. It's solid. Uh, but what it needs is a little enlivening and I'm going to put some, some people in. I've already sketched them in pencil and tinted them slightly. So it's the people stage. So very simply, just want to do a few little circles and some ambling shapes. You don't want to be dead, you know, the odd arm coming out as so they're gesticulating or carrying a bag type thing. These are people coming up and walking on the steps here. There's a couple here having a chat. I think they must be young. And in love, maybe. In fact, when you're drawing little figures, it's quite a good idea to have a little story going in your mind. It gives them a little bit more interest. Prague in winter is especially beautiful, and I'm thinking of putting in a little bit of snow. But before I do that, what I want to do is to put in there's some white glazing bars in the building opposite. So using a fine tip pen and a brush to put some white paint on. I need a bit of test paper to see if it works. Oh yes. And we'll put these in. It's not uber accurately done, but it's, it gives the flavour. And as they say, God's in the detail, so there's nothing nicer than saying a little detail like this. Now then, the fun bit. One of the, the effects of the whole picture to come. 
like that. I've seen this and the, the next thing you know, the whole place is blanketed, but it always starts off with a little tiny flurry of snow. So we just get a few like waves of snow coming down. And of course you can put in as much or as little as you like. Obviously you don't want to obscure the whole image, but just to create the effect. Okay, so all that needs now to do something in front of the shadow here. And the window there. So again, less is more. We'll leave it at that and then we'll finally do the expensive bit. Ta-da! Et voilà!